one minute and two seconds of logos. Over two minutes of credits on top of clouds that do nothing for nobody. Something does happen in this movie called The Happening, right? Jesus Christ, this score is so much better than the movie in which it's situated that I'm gonna throw an extra five sins in. I'm so sorry you have to see this, Mr. Newton Howard. In case you confused it with Central Park, Oklahoma City. I forgot where I am. You're at the place where the killers meet to decide what to do with the crippled girl. Even for an M. Night Shyamalan movie, f***ing what? Is that blood? The appropriate question is, is this what she's actually looking at? Because I can't see a goddamn thing. And I'm guessing she can't see whatever she's looking at from this distance either. Because there's nothing f***ing there. You know, back in 2008, those improv everywhere assholes would sometimes go way too far. Claire? Of f***ing course there's one asshole in this entire park that's temporarily immune to the evil windy voodoo happening. So we can have some sort of explicit narrative of what's happening. Rather than just watching it happening. Happening. I can't wait till they get to Nebraska and they tell us it's 25,928 blocks from Central Park, New York City. Well, I saw your thing and it said W-Y. The big guy says, no, man, mine says, welcome to Jamaica, have a nice day. That's a long dick joke right there. Jesus, give him some room. Give the injured person some room cliche. I mean, seriously, these guys are standing well away from the body. Also, the beginning of this movie is really just an excuse for M. Night to show off how many different ways people can die, which was already done much more effectively 15 years before in Groundhog Day. Look, I don't know if you guys have heard about this article in the New York Times about honeybees vanishing. Mark Wahlberg playing anything with sincerity always comes off like a guy who really wants to try this acting thing. Like, everything sincere is said with an urgency it doesn't quite deserve. Hey guys, did you hear the sun is going to supernova in the future? Maybe it's time we started planning for Earth's evacuation, because we're not gonna make it when that happens. Also, the movie just assumes that these high schoolers would be carefully poring over the science section of the New York Times, and some of them might, sure, but Dignam sounds like he expects them to. Also, in case you confused it for Philadelphia High School, Pittsburgh. This is scary, huh? This is the question that M. Night constantly asked the entire crew of this movie during filming. Should be more interested in science, Jake. You know why? Because your face is perfect. F***ing <laughs> priceless. An act of nature and will never fully understand it. Nice answer, Jake. He's right. Dude, this is the equivalent of answering because when a teacher asks why. Or saying because language is like life, man. Science will come up with some reason to put in the books. I mean, we will fail to acknowledge that there are forces at work beyond our understanding. Weirdly enough, the text for this class was edited by Mike Huckabee. The Dark Lord. <laughs> Don't look into her eyes. I'd like to think of this movie as a sequel to Dead Poet Society that went terribly, terribly wrong. Also, so is this blatant insubordination to the vice principal supposed to endear Elliot to his students? Like, I can't figure out how sh**ty or excellent this asshole is supposed to be. He's basically Jason Schwartzman's character in Yo Teach. This classroom has two light switches, not terribly far apart from each other, and with only one entrance exit. I know why the music department couldn't get their funding now. Why did the vice principal drag Mark Wahlberg out of his class personally, when it looks like these teachers were told via a normal communication device, the intercom? Or did the vice principal drag each one of these teachers out individually and finally got to him just now? There appears to be an event happening. Roll credits. Also, let it never be said that the principal of this school was hired based on his communication skills. Central Park was just hit by what seems to be a terrorist attack. Central Park? That's kind of odd. It really, really isn't. What makes Central Park odder than any other place where this could happen? Identified variables, design an experiment. Um, is no one even mentioning all that that's happening in New York? We saw the students looking at their phones, so they know it's going down. But sure, let's focus more on the students' begrudging respect for their weirdly swole teacher. Hey guys. Nothing. I'd like to imagine that the script told Elliot to say, hey guys, and then when Mark Wahlberg turned the page, he found the script blank, and he figured he had to literally say what was on the page. I told her the probability of something happening in Philadelphia is very low. Especially an NBA championship. Yeah, let me think about that, okay? Is there a reason that the camera is right there when it cuts to Elliot? She's acting odd, just don't worry about it. I know you're used to that kind of behavior by hanging out with me anyway. I'm gonna tell you something. You should never tell your best friend. Why is everybody saying that? Nobody has said that at all in this movie to anyone for any reason until now. I walked into a waiting room by mistake and she was crying. That's not who she is. She's never going to jump in when you need her, man. Okay, a couple things here. First, Julian walked into the waiting room by accident? Second, just from this brief encounter, he knows for sure that Alma and Elliot aren't going to work? Third, he's never told him about this? And finally, he waits until there's a potential disaster and they're surrounded by high school kids to drop this f***ing truth bomb? Chasing crackers, that's f***ed up. Can we unpack what's happening here? Alma gets a call from her potential side piece, but rather than decline the call, since she knows Elliot's almost home, she lets that ring the whole way. Then, when Elliot does get home, she doesn't immediately erase the call. I know this is the late 2000s, but besides maybe Tiger Woods, people knew how to properly cell phone. Why does the World News Network constantly show the temperature for only Philadelphia? 
This new neurotoxin is basically flipping the preservation switch. And I'm reporting from outside the building with no personal protection, despite the toxin being clearly airborne in this city. Also, man, there's never been a more convenient time for Elliot to walk in on some perfect exposition. Just when you thought there couldn't be any more evil that could be invented. Hey, we still haven't even gotten to the last airbender in After Earth. I don't know if there was technically a feature where the buzzer on a flip phone would ring constantly, but I choose to believe that Alma hacked hers and turned it into a sex toy since the last time it rang. Autopsies on the first victims confirm the toxin is a natural compound. So there's a theory that this movie is about mass paranoia. And in fact, nothing is happening at all and people are doing bizarre things because their minds are playing tricks on them. And that all the goofball sh we see is a result of this mental plague. But when the movie puts in segments like this, where a sane newscaster is reporting news from scientists, it starts to break those walls down. Plus, it somehow only affects people in the Northeast. And in the day of the internet and cable news, this mass paranoia would have hit way more areas of the country. How are you? Good, you? Good. What the hell is the deal between these two? Was there more to that waiting room encounter than we knew about? Could he ultimately be the Joey that keeps calling her goddamn phone? Movie asks way too many unanswerable questions. Don't get all sensitive. Just give her a chance. Skip. And look, maybe it's a mass paranoia metaphor, but is this how mass paranoia starts? With a bunch of people doing the same thing at the same time, independently of each other? It would make more sense if you had one person think they see something, tell someone else, make that person paranoid, and so on. But this is not that. Also, I'm pretty sure this entire movie is based on that Radiohead Just video, only with attempts at explanations that make the mystery not fun to watch. The hallmark of this genius neurotoxin is clearly its flair for dramatic timing. Good thing this guy picks up the gun and walks several feet before killing himself, so that the woman on the sidewalk can see the gun and complete this one take of mayhem. We ate. Tiramisu together, that is it. So that's what the kids were calling it back in 2008? I guess it was the Netflix and chill of 10 years ago. She got on a bus going to New Jersey. She's headed to the town of Princeton. Awesome, mommy's headed back into the path of the evil death toxin. Even if you believe the attacks on New York and Philly were specific to those locations, why would you go anywhere near those two areas, much less right in between them? What the hell is going on, Elliot? I'm sorry, ma'am, the correct wording is, what the hell is happening, Elliot? I'm afraid I'm gonna have to ask you to exit the bus. Train service has been discontinued. This will be the last stop for all passengers. It's hilarious how the train workers decide to go with the we're stopping here and you're just gonna have to deal with it and f you for being curious method, instead of just telling them something about the attacks that everyone in the world knows about and would be a satisfactory explanation for their stop. Why are you giving me one useless piece of information at a time? We lost contact. Like Mark Wahlberg is the only asshole who's asking these guys what's going on. I remember once at a movie theater when a crowd of people ran into the projection booth to yell at a projectionist when the Shawshank Redemption f***ed up. To think all these people would be calmly talking amongst themselves during a supposed terrorist attack stopped in bum Pennsylvania while the train workers were 10 feet away is f***ing laughable. I'm not saying anything. We're stuck here. But they just told you they lost contact with everyone. Isn't that terrifying but useful information? Shouldn't you be on the cell phone or watching the news or doing something other than standing out in the f***ing open air right now? Wait, bro. you wanna do that? Bro, I got it. Man, I can't tell you how many times I heard my high school science teacher use the word bro in casual conversation. You know that everyone gives up energy, right? This f***ing guy. Look at this. It was taken an hour ago at the Philadelphia Zoo. Yes, come look at this random stranger with a small child in his custody. Come hither to view my natural death porn. The event appears to be limited to the Northeast. Which is, as we all know, the only location in America with trees and plants. Where are we? The dead sun. Now we have a problem on both sides of the coin. Either it's mass paranoia, which this entire diner should be suffering from, or it's an actual chemical attack, which this entire diner should be suffering from, considering it's right in the damn center of the attack. Whatever this is, it looks like it's not occurring about 90 miles from here. 90 miles west, south, north, and how do you know? And yet this is good enough for all these assholes to leave the diner and probably without leaving a tip. But they're reasonably confident this is an outside killer, whether it's natural or not, right? So why the do all those cars have the windows rolled down? Julian! I swear to God, this entire Elliot tries to hitch a ride scene was shot without John Leguizamo while he was on the set of Righteous Kill. And then they got him for an hour or so to shoot this. Like, this is Elliot's best friend. They've been traveling together the whole time. And yet it looked like for a minute there, one or the other was willing to get a ride without checking the other status. I can't get a bit on the phone or email or nothing. So your plan is to abandon your child, go to a different epicenter of this attack, which is still a pretty large city, and just stand in the middle of the toxin-filled street and yell for her? This is like the worst parts of the plans in Cloverfield and What About Bob combined. I got her, Julian. I'll take my daughter's hand unless you need it. <laughs> this mother who's leaving his daughter in their care takes time to threaten one of her caregivers? I knew this movie was bad, but it's bad on a micro level. For some reason, this shot of Leguizamo sitting still in a jeep is presented to us in slow motion. 
Subtle. We're packing hot dogs for the road. You know, hot dogs get a bad rap. I bet this guy's stand-up act kills in Filbert. Plants react to human stimulus. They, they prove it in tests. Elliot, a f***ing science teacher, doesn't believe this basic tenet of human-plant interaction, essentially agreeing with Alma. Not only that, aren't they running for their f***ing lives while being pursued by a natural phenomenon that no one understands? Is this the time for cavalier tomfoolery? <laughs> Don't look outside. You mean, this is the first time anyone's seeing the obviously hanging people in the middle of the road? It took until you were right on top of it to see it? Even if the girl in the back seat couldn't see it until now. Both Julian and the driver are psychopaths who decided not to warn anyone before they passed it. Also, these are hilariously complicated methods of death, right? Why not just wander into the local river, run the truck into a tree, line the workers in front of the truck and mow them down, and then have only one person hang themselves? My point is that M. Knight was so enamored with the fact that he could show us all these horrific images that he didn't stop to ask himself if he should. Close the vents! Yes, that will keep this soft top cheap Wrangler airtight. Just look at me! Just keep looking at me! Dude, why take the chance of making her look at your face to calm her down when she might have seen the pest, or spun, or spawn, or the fan, or... Also, I guess because they're going to New Jersey, this is the movie's attempt to stick Brian O'Halloran, a.k.a. Dante Hicks, into the movie? This is a poor attempt at putting Dante Hicks in the movie. And I think he wasn't even supposed to be here today. Julian, at least for the time being, easily survives this. Then we hit the highway from there, we're 30 miles from the state line. What state line are they looking for? The map on the TV basically covered the entirety of the eastern seaboard, so the only possible escape would be west. But the next state over would be f***ing Ohio, and that's a long-ass way away. Have they really been driving that long, but it's still daylight? You got binoculars in the back from when you were spying on our neighbors. From the jeep? Why do the binoculars need an explanation? I mean, yeah, we might have seen this guy having convenient binoculars, but that's still what they kind of are, right? Wow, what a specific place for all these people to die, especially right out in the middle of nowhere on a country road. This is clearly not the best place to organize a flash mob. Cheese and crackers. Cheese and crackers. Who's Joey? Oh, it's no one. It's not that Elliot is suspicious right now. This is just his everyday go-to confused face. Maybe he's onto something. What are you talking about? I don't know. I think Elliot is in the running to be the least helpful hero in a movie ever made. An award show I just made up, airing tonight in my head at Bamble 30 in the morning. Just keep watching out the window with the tree, baby. Someone will oh, come and get you her, soon. Tell, tell her not to go near the window with the tree. Baby, don't go near the window with the tree. Why the f***ing would anyone listen to this asshole? Especially someone who has no clue what he's talking about. This is her daughter, right? I'm sorry, honey, I know you're scared, but this dude looks a lot like that guy from Rockstar. So I'm gonna go ahead and trust his opinion on how you should proceed in the disaster scenario, okay? She says everyone's dead outside. Honey, you're talking funny. What's wrong with you? Good of Stacy to start dying after she gave important information. How the f*** did she live when everyone else already died? I see... <laughs> in calculus. This comes from watching too much Stand and Deliver. I got an easy remedy for that. Take two Pulp Fictions and an Argo and you're right as rain. You went from outside. Oh, really? How am I supposed to masturbate to that? Also, if Elliot is increasingly suspicious of the goddamn wind, which everyone should be at this point, why the f*** is he not in one of the cars right now with the windows up? Seriously, this motherfucker straight up tells Stacy to stay away from the windows while he's out in the middle of open air, eating cold hot dogs. Yeah, it's been a rough day, huh? Hey, you better check on Joey to see how he's holding up. Trees can communicate with bushes, bushes with grass, and everything in between. Hmm, this didn't seem insane in the script, but when you hear it out loud... Maybe we should have waited for the rest of them, stay in the big group like the private said? What I'm wondering is why they're walking at all. I know the town they're going to has dirt roads, but they're still f***ing roads, right? There has to be a reason why they're eschewing the safety, comfort, and shelter of the cars, right? Right? Hot dog guy looks to his right and sees the wind blowing, and god damn it, is that ever suspicious. Normal everyday f***ing wind, but this so-called plant expert thinks there's something different about it, and he's right! My firearm is my friend! It will not leave my side! Why do some people talk crazy when they get infected, but most of the others become immobile and do nothing? Oh no. Sure, Mark Wahlberg's weirdly serene level of concern here is a sin, but everyone else just standing around while gunshots go off? Nobody fears for their lives? They just know for a fact that those people got infected and are killing themselves. Something in this field could be releasing the chemical into the air when there's too many of us together. Holy if it weren't for the politics, Elliot's theory would already be published in Scientific American. Elliot's scientific method was to stand in the field while gunshots taking the lives of his fellow travelers rang out. From this, he came up with his groundbreaking larger group theory, in which plants decide to let small groups of people live as long as there's a larger group in virtually the same area perceived as a bigger threat. The evidence comes from tickling your own taint. Let's just stay ahead of the wind. This iconic line is setting up the greatest chase against the weather scene since global warming attacked in the day after tomorrow. Here it comes! What's taking the wind so goddamn long? It's f***ing wind. But it's 
seriously needs this long to overtake some slow-moving assholes? Also, not that it really matters, but didn't anyone think to cover up their noses, mouths, or other orifices? Like, we figured out that it's in the air, but isn't that the hard part? The rest of it, keeping it out of our bodies, is relatively simple. The wind, of course, does nothing. And they're fine! And this is the dual problem with whatever this movie is saying is the threat. Either it's mass paranoia, which these guys should not be dying from because they're as paranoid as they can be, or it's the toxin, which should have spread to them after the wind tracked them down. But they're okay, and this movie continues. Could this really be happening? Sorry, Max Payne, but we've already had our allowable amounts of roll credits moments, and for the repetition, I will have to award you with 12 extra cents. My name is Elliot Moore. Maybe somewhere in this movie is a comedy. Maybe M. Knight's laughing at us all for taking this movie seriously. It was a ridiculous gamble that nearly ended his career, though. Let's think about that for a second. The timing of this movie, if a veiled comedy, could not have been worse. It came after The Village and Lady in the Water. Not exactly the time to be making a movie where Mark Wahlberg talks to plants. Plastic. Talking to a plastic plant. Yeah, it's the plastic part that makes talking to it insane. Why is this happening? Believe me, kid, I was definitely asking myself the same question in the movie theater in 2008 around this point. The bees disappearing? I mean, I don't know. It feels like a pattern. God damn it. This has nothing to do with bees, Elliot. You haven't even mentioned the fucking bees since the beginning of the movie. There's two groups coming together. There's too many of them together. Apparently, this proves Elliot right, but remember those construction workers? They were around tons of people who were flinging themselves off the roof, and they didn't get infected. What about Stacy, who was on the phone with her mom and inside a house all alone? She wasn't around a large group of people. Ironically, though, Stacy's mom was around a large group of people. Maybe it's because she's got it going on. She's all I want, and I've waited for so long. M. Night Shyamalan really wants you to see what will happen when this tractor finally runs over this guy. It'll take about seven hours, but eventually, you'll see it. An emergency broadcast. All those who are still inside the affected area... Heroes find a convenient radio hanging from a fence, but static prevents them from hearing the entire emergency broadcast cliche. Also, why hasn't this shit been playing the whole time? Thousands of people are dead in a huge swath of the Northeast, but the last time Elliot turned on the radio a few minutes ago, mind you, there was just talk radio about a fucking nuclear disaster. Are you sure? We should keep going. Why? Haven't you figured out that the problem is a large number of people? You're not racing against the clock, so as long as your group is small, you can camp out anywhere, as long as you can find food, right? Are you joking? I feel like this question, and Mark Wahlberg's definite but not definite reaction to it, sums up what it's like to watch this movie. I think I can open this door. Wait, we're a gang now? We're gonna take whatever we want? Or you could try knocking, right? This is kind of an apocalyptic scenario, but there are no f***ing zombies around to wake up or anything. You're up against plant life. I think a distinct notification that you're at the front door would be safe and sufficient. Oh, Blackwater, keep on rolling! Feel it, feel it! Oh! so the only people we're supposed to care about are literally these three. I understand this is standard crisis storytelling and shit, but I had to kill the rando kids by homicide? Jesus, there's nothing about this movie that makes sense or is enjoyable. There are some quiet rumblings that the government may be involved in the tragic events playing out in the Northeast. In a better movie with a clear message, the idea of a news program speculating without evidence of government involvement in a terrorist attack while people in Nebraska are in a garage circle jerking each other with guns might be meaningful. Goes a long way in trying to prove that this movie is about paranoia, but it's pretty clear that's bullshit at this point. There's a spring house in the back. It has a, a speaking tube running under the ground to the main house. I would say this is a bit of foreshadowing here, but this is foreshadowing so hard, it's basically a, a four clips. Don't touch things that aren't yours. Can't just one person be f***ing normal for one goddamn moment in this movie? I mean, Jesus lady, you have a plate of goddamn cookies here on the dinner table. I would assume those cookies are there for the taking too. How would you know if something were to happen? Like a world event. Twitter users to non-Twitter users at every cocktail party. I'm scared, Elliot. Yeah, I don't blame you. I mean, that chick was in Carrie. Plan on murdering me in my sleep. What? No. Is it comedy? Is it horror? You don't know. Also, well, you convinced her, big guy. Nice work there with the age-old argumentative trick of immediate and confused denial. Throws them off the trail every time. So I guess the kill large groups of people thing doesn't matter anymore? Sure, we've been told that smaller and smaller groups are getting infected, but I just don't understand why the plants, which are apparently sentient killers, decided to go with an upside-down pyramid scheme for their murders. Also, they clearly had a chance to f*** Elliot up here, but decided against it. Maybe for sentimental reasons. I don't know. Sounds like as good a reason as any. <laughs> So, is Mrs. Jones trying to kill herself or Bob Lee Swagger? Because I don't remember anyone giving a shit about who they took out after they'd been exposed to the toxin. Just that they wanted to off themselves in a cinematically grandiose way. Also, this does not appear to be one of those brand new homes that hermetically seals in each room. This door screams draft, right? There's even an open keyhole. If that shit can't get in to kill the dad from the lovely bones, it deserves to be defeated. What's going on, Elliot? What's happening here? God, I wish they'd have properly named this phenomena. Like, I'd be fine with calling it a Geostorm or a Toxin Buster 2000 or the Carnage. The title of this movie is essentially a version of the f***ing pronoun game. You remember our first date? I'd remove all the sins here if Elliot had taken Alma to go see I Heart Huckabees. Then we checked the little paper chart and it turned out that 
purple meant I was horny. Curiously, this guy named Joey had just walked by seconds before. I want to be with you, and I'm going to come be with you. Damn, I mean, you can't wait like a couple hours or anything? How long have you been having this conversation? Like two minutes? Child abuse. Also, you know what? This f***ing ending pisses me off to no end. This entire movie, Elliot's had three character traits. Indecision, the proclivity to break down a problem using the scientific method, and bad acting. And one of those traits is extremely useful at this time. Find a scientifically viable way to get across the field without being exposed. He's the least useful scientist ever. He's the anti-Watney. I mean, could you see this asshole? surviving more than a half soul on Mars. Also, even if he wants to satisfy his end-of-the-world boner, why is Alma not only putting herself at risk, but exposing Jess? At least one of them couldn't stay back at the f***ing shed. God damn, this pisses me off to no end. Oh, and yeah, they f***ing survived this shit. I think the only reason Alma came all the way out here is that from a distance, Elliot really does look like Joseph Gordon-Levitt. The event must have ended before we went out there. The what? Oh, you meant the happening. Damn, dude. You gotta be a little clearer when discussing your world-threatening events. You don't want to be late for the first day schools are open. In movie world, couples who took care of a kid get to automatically adopt the kid when it's discovered the kid's parents have died. Hang on now. Three months? It's been three months? That's it. I know it seems like a lot of time, but these streets are relatively bustling, especially for the morning. And only three months ago, almost everyone in the Northeast died. Violently. You can really get that cleaned up and the infrastructure back online in three f***ing months? Traces of the neurotoxin have been found in some plants and trees. If this movie is about paranoia, is it saying the scientists are paranoid too? That their so-called findings are really just grasping at straws? I don't know. I'm just glad this is short. I believe a, a warning, like, like, like the first spot of a rash. And thankfully, due to this warning, the movie-watching public collectively dunked themselves in calamine lotion, and we haven't had a recurrence in over ten years. Huh, I guess as soon as the threat was over, Alma's mood ring immediately turned to purple while they were in that field house. Oh, now it's happening in France. They call it Le Vemont. That's French for the movie. Okay, well, it was great to meet you. Say hi to your mother for me, okay? Hey, guys. Nothing. What the hell is going on, Elliot? I honestly don't know. What are you talking about? I don't know. What do you mean? Everyone's <clears throat> dead? They went from outside. I don't have any reason to disagree right now. Oh, no. The toxin? We need to do something! Just let me think. Why can't anybody give me a goddamn second? Here it comes! You think it could be plants? I don't know. Why is this happening? I don't know for sure, Josh. I don't believe it's nature. It may not be. It could be some other explanation. I don't know. I don't think it's terror, sir! What? No! I want to be with you, and I'm gonna come be with you. When I tell you to do something, I mean that shit. Burn it all! Listen, Julian, if Alma's acting weird, just be cool, okay? What's going on? Yes, I, I don't know. Sometimes I get the feeling like she's cheating on me. Yeah, I get that feeling too, man. You don't have an opinion? Well, you gotta have an opinion. I mean, do you think that God came down from heaven? You're not interested in what happened to the beast. No, not the beast! Not the beast! I immediately regret this decision. The password is vagina. I'm freaking out, man. You are freaking out, man.